Hello and welcome to this SDC Verifier webinar. Today's topic is uh, offshore structures and structural verification according to rules and regulations for offshore. Uh, we are going to use ANSYS uh, as, a, as our finite element uh, analysis program in this, uh, during this webinar. But all the features I'm showing to you today, they are available for all the FAA softwares we support. So it's available for Sim Center and from FEMAP as well, for FEMAP as well. So it's possible to use any of this. We had uh, used FEMAP in our previous fatigue cal uh, calculation. So we're just switching different softwares to cover different uh, topics. Here uh, today we have a model of the offshore structure, which is mostly made with beam elements. Uh, I'm going to show mesh and uh, show the wireframe. So we'll be able to, to see how the model is built. We have a beam model, but uh, the top deck is made with plate elements. So uh, it's possible to have a combined beam plate uh, shell, shells and solids uh, mod, uh, elements in, in the same model and do different type of verification on different type of finite elements. So it's also possible to create uh, some level of detailization by, by making the joint connections with, with shells and then re recognizing, the, re recognizing the welds and setting the uh, weld classification, checking the weld strength or fatigue for this uh, details. Uh, so this is the huge benefit of uh, SDC so uh, Verifier software, that it allows you to have the same complete model for different levels of detailization in different parts or no nodes of your structure. And uh, you can use ANSYS for the general FEA for the beam member checks, for joint checks, for weld uh, strengths, for fatigue, for plate and stiffener buckling, and it can be done completely in one uh, finite element model. And all this uh, variety of offshore checks are available in SDC Verifier. But as you may know, all the checks are done not on the finite elements, but on structural members. So we're going to see today how SDC Verifier handles the automatic recognition of uh, the structural members. How does these uh, structural recognition uh, tools work? So we're going to see the joint finder. We're going to see the beam member finder. We're going to recognize welds and panels today. And we're going to present several. Uh, so we're going to show all the checks available in SDC Verifier. We're going to uh, to show you how to create checks. We will make one example and present the results for one of the checks. So I'm going to switch to a SDC Verifier window. It can be standalone as I'm having here. It's handy when you're using two screens. Also, if you need uh, frequently to interact with your uh, ANSYS model, you can have it in embed mode. It's possible also to switch to open the SDC Verifier tab and have it embed. But we're going to have a standalone version because mostly we will operate in SDC Verifier today. So this is a standard window. Um, I assume that most of you are already familiar with the software and you already know how, uh, how it looks like and what are the main capabilities. If not, please uh, check our website. Take a look on recordings of previous webinars on our YouTube channel, uh, walk through the tutorials we have. And of course, if you have any questions, we're happy to help you. We're happy to give you a demonstration or introduction on the features you are looking for. So we're going to go uh, through the recognition tools in SDC Verifier. It's possible to launch them from this tab, from this item in the model tree. You have the recognition in here or you also can uh, use this tab, or you can basically click on the buttons of, of every type of finder to go to the, uh, to the recognition tool. So we're going to launch joint finder to, yeah, I already did so. So uh, joint finder and joint recognition is used in joint checks 
and it's also necessary to determine beam buckling length. So it's uh, it's necessary to recognize joints to have a proper recognition of the uh, of the beam member lengths for the beam buckling checks. So joint is a location where different beam members intersect and connect. They are used to uh, to do this to, to to recognize the beam member lengths. Uh, by uh, beam member finder tool also. So there is uh, six type of different joints we have in this DC verifier. It can be 1D joint on, all, only on the uh, difference of uh, cross sections or materials. There is a 2D joints where uh, members are in the same plane. There is 3D joints in three planes. There is three, three joints. There is joints on the connections and also there can be user defined joints. So um, in all SDC verifier recognition tools, uh, you have some settings, you have possibility to, uh, to set the parameters for your recognition, but basically in 99% of cases, all you have to do to, to find the connections in your model and to de determine them, you need to press find. We do have uh, 20,000 of finite elements in this model and we'll see how quick and convenient this recognition is. So to, to find the joints, I'm just pressing the find. And you see it's less, less than a second to figure out the 705 joints we have in the model. Here we have a list. In the list, we also have the element ID and the property of uh, every uh, connection. So we can select all of them or we can select just a part of them. Let's say, let's start from over here and uh, go up till here and uh, we are able to export these joints to the component by type or we are able to plot them and preview we can preview the type uh, label with labels or we can preview the type in colors let's do it uh, we have quite a lot of joints so let's do it in colors when i'm pressing this button is the verifier starts to plot this take some time to interact with Anthes Mechanical to preview this plot. And what you can also do, you can press the highlight feature and when you are selecting any node ID, any joint ID, this joint will be highlighted in uh, Mechanical immediately. Uh, with all SDC verifier finders, it's possible to uh, add the recognition members by hand. Uh, if you think something is uh, is skipped and you need to add something manually or the connection is is uh, you have the connection on the switch on the on the change of different of the same shape of the same material and yeah of course as you cannot recognize the connection of two uh, finite elements which are the same as joint but if you know you have some kind of can or welded connection there or something you are able to add this my, uh, by hand by pressing this green button. Meanwhile, the plot was done and uh, we have the recognition. We can preview it and all the type of joints are highlighted here. So with light blue color, we have 1D joint. Then we have a 3D joint orange, green are 2D joints. So you can take a look in here where we have two, two elements Connect, where we have elements connected in the same plane, it's 2D joint. Here is several of 1D joints, and uh, when it interacts in different planes, we have 3D joints. So these joints will be used for determining the beam buckling length and in joint check, which we will show you later. We can press OK, and this is already stored and saved for, uh, for the verification in standard. You, you don't need to, to create any components or save it in any way, you just press OK. And let's go to the next one. Next one is Beam Member Finder. So to, to do the member check, to verify the beam buckling, we need to find beam, to define the beam member length and some CM type, type and a uh, few coefficients. And the, of course the connection, the type of the connection because uh, Beam member finder recognize uh, this beam members also taking into account the direction and in which in which direction you have this connection. So here is a nice example. Uh, we have a, an I beam here, as you can see, and 
we have a connection, a 2DY connection over the weak axis in here, which splits this member into two sub-members with distance of 2.5 meter over uh, weak axis, but for beam buckling over the strong axis, it's still one member of five meter long. So type of joint helps us to verify the, uh, the beam member uh, lengths for uh, the checks. So as well as with joints, uh, here we have separate tabs with lengths in Y direction, lengths in Z and torsional, but once again, all we have to do is to press find. So after we did so, it took us slightly more time, but still very quick to recognize 326 beam members. Each beam member is split into sub-members. Well, if, it's, if it has any, any intersections and connection, it's split into sub-members. If you think that something should be adjusted or you want to, to change it for your verification, you can set the custom length for any item. By the way, if you're going to change it, if I'm selecting, for example, this member, uh, member number five with length of 15 meter, and I'm setting the, the length for it of 20 meters, you will have a comment that it was modified and you will have this mark here, which gives you an indication that something was changed by hand and not recognized automatically. So we are also able to select all of these items. And here we have some plotting options. We can plot it with ID labels or with length labels or with length factors, CM type, and uh, so on. Uh, let's have a nice plot with length. So I'm selecting this item and uh, the plot plotting is started, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so during its plotting, I will. Uh, I want to mention that it's also possible to remove some members if you don't want to be, don't want these members to be included into the check. It is possible to edit this manually, as I showed. It's possible to also add something uh, by hand if necessary, and there is also a possibility to split these members by nodes. So you can uh, you can select this Edit Member tab which I'm going to show you next. And there is a possibility to, to select the node type and to, to split in the certain node member on different sub-members. So plot is done. So as you can see, the recognition is finished and it's completely mesh independent. So it's, it doesn't matter how many finite elements you have along the distance from node to node you will have one member recognized and one joint for the joint checks, one member for the B member checks. Uh, there is a nice, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, opportunity to edit this. So you can select each member, see in which nodes it has uh, connections and you can split this member in the, in the joint. So by member one, you see this node 17,858. And in this node, it's split it. If you will just remove these check boxes, it won't be split it in this node. So uh, nice uh, opportunity to, to make some changes if necessary. Usually it's not the case, but uh, yeah, we want to give the user complete control over what he's capable of. And uh, we have a filter. For example, here we can filter all the members by length. So we can select uh, this parameter criteria and um, let's say 25 meters and press find and all the members which are longer than 25 meters are uh, selected in here. Uh, okay, all we have to do now to, ha to, to keep this beam members available for beam buckling check, which I'm going to show you today is to press okay. It's done. Uh, two more recognition tools very quickly. If you are willing to perform the weld strength or uh, fatigue checks, you need to define the weld. So we go to Weld Finder. I already showed this in the previous webinar on fatigue. All we have to do is press find. 20,000 of elements and all the welds are uh, just recognized. Once again, we can set all of them. Now let's keep this uh, plotting with different IDs. Let's just preview. Uh, this button allows you to preview highlighted. So we only have shell elements on top on the deck and we can recognize all the welding in the deck automatically. I can show you the mesh. This is how we have uh, the 
shell elements build and closest element to the connection is treated as uh, the mm, weld and it gives us a possibility not only to perform these checks but also it converts the stresses into the weld direction so we can summarize it and uh, we can do a strength check over the complete weld and set the different classification along the weld and perpendicular also you can use some exceptions for the roll sections and so on and this is uh, the weld recognition and sorry and the last one i wanted to show you is the recognition of panels which is used for public so we press ok in here and we go to panel finder panel finder gives us a possibility to recognize sections uh, by the geometrical coordinate then on this sections uh, you can figure out the panels which are surrounded by uh, girders or in other sections and you can recognize the plates mesh independently if it's surrounded by stiffeners you uh, once again you can have hundreds of finite element here or thousand for the precise stress result and then it will be still treated as one panel for the plate buckling so all we have to do is press find here we can see that we have the section in X, Y, and Z direction. We only have a small uh, deck on top, so I believe we're going to have only one layer. Yeah, it's a section that one. If you have more decks like this, you will have all of them in here. Then we have one panel because there is no other sections or girders. And we have plenty of plates. We have a list of stiffeners. If we select all the plates, and preview it with uh, once again well let's do it without labels colors only we will see our panels highlighted with different colors and this panels will be used for the plate buckling calculation i'm also going to cover this in the next session next week so let's keep the plate buckling for now but i want you to understand that this plate buckling are available on the same model as well so we press OK, and now we have uh, already the opportunity to go directly to standards. So here in Model 3, we have a standards chapter. I already have some of them prepared, uh, but I want to show you the list of the standards which are available. So to add new standard in the verifier, you, uh, you, you, you make a right click on the standards. Select Add, and here we have the ABS rules for the plate buckling, AIC checks on members, and we also have a bolt check according to AIC, API check on members, then some pressure vessel codes and fatigue. We have a lot of DNV rules on fatigue, plate buckling, stiffener buckling, weld strengths. Uh, we have Euro codes. We have ISO and NORSOC for the members. So, um, and we also have a custom check. In custom check, you're able to write your own rules. So, um, let's go for the AAC for the members check. What we are uh, doing, so to, to execute the check, we just select the one which we, which we want to have. And the standard wizard appears. Here we have to define several settings. Uh, basically, all we need for now is to uh, select the type uh, of uh, calculation, uh, the method. Are we going to use ASD method or LRFD method? And we need to define how the section is built. Fortunately, we cannot recognize it automatically from the model. So uh, yeah, we just select all of them and define that it's rolled. Apply to all. We can also section by section define if some of them are built up. We press OK. Uh, CB factor is defined as one. It's lateral torsional buckling uh, coefficient. If necessary, you can modify it, but we keep it default. Uh, if you have some stiffeners inside of your members, it's possible to reduce the length of each member. So in here, you can set up the distance of the stiffeners and uh, basically in such a way reduce the length for the check we keep as it is if you have any holes you can define the, head, the net area and shear lag factor as you can see we we always have a description for each characteristic so you can take a look it's usually shown in which table or what chapter of the standard prescribes this uh, coefficient 
uh, we have a selection. In the selection, there are only shapes which are supported for this verification. So it's tube, tubular members, circular member, members, rectangle, channel section, and I-beam. Uh, and also, we use yield and tensile to, to perform verification. So it's read automatically. For, it can be automatically read from the model just by pressing update from ANSYS, or you can modify it and type in the values. Uh, we can also use API for the tubular members, and the other way around in the, the API code, we are able to use AISC for members. Sometimes it's, it's requested. So to add the standard, we just press OK, and here in the list, list it appears. We can open it and see the amount of checks which are included. So AISC standard uh, on members uh, chapter uh, contains 16 different checks. First of them are just geometrical characteristics. Then we are figuring out the strengths, uh, actual for shear, for bendings. And then we have the verification ex itself on actual shear, bending, and torsion. And we have an overall check, which combines all of this together and comes up with one utilization factor, which uh, presents uh, how, uh, yeah, which represents uh, if your structure is passing the rules of the standard or not. And uh, what else I wanted to show you is that the, um, it's not a black box and all the formulas are available. You can select any of the checks, press edit, and take a look how it is calculated. And it's not only uh, available to see, you can see the intermediate results if necessary. You can uh, uh, have a description, so you have a description from where this formula is actually taken, which chapter or which page, which table defines this. You always have an access to input, so you can adjust characteristics we were talking about. So uh, you want to change the section build type, you go to edit and select and modify it at any uh, other uh, time. And uh, basically, all you have to do to, uh, to perform the verification, you go to the, we want to see the results of the overall check. You execute right click and uh, select table or plot you would like to have for, uh, for presenting the results. Uh, I think I already have here one on, uh, so I want to see the overall plot of the utilization factor. You always have a, a chance to modify it to set the selections you want to see, set the load to be used or the view which you want to use. And when you're pressing preview, uh, SDC starts to calculate. So it's 1726 uh, for me now. And um, let's see how long it's going to take. Meanwhile, I wanted to remind you that uh, this is part of our months of webinars, and we already had two sessions. We don't, unfortunately, it's very short sessions, and for example, I'd like to show you how to present several codes and uh, uh, how to perform like AAC, IPI, and NORSOC at the same time and put it into one report. Fortunately, we don't have enough time, and uh, um, uh, so reporting was covered Two weeks ago, you would, if you are interested in automatic generation of reports of the results of the code uh, we just did, uh, please go to that one and take a look. If you have any specific needs or requests, feel free to contact me after this webinar or uh, just send me an email or give me a call. I'm always open to the communication. Uh, our support engineers are happy to help you to set up your calculation, to take a look, uh, to, to give you more information on, uh, on the calculation. We also have this step-by-step -step tutorials, which are guiding you through the checks, so you're always able to, to take a look on step-by-step on, uh, -step guidance and what actions are required to perform to uh, to execute a certain check. Uh, here at the bottom, we are able to see uh, how, what is the progress of our calculation. So it's going to take, I assume, it's going to take a few more seconds to, to finalize this kind of calculation. Uh, what else I wanted to show you is how to perform the API uh, check. I will just quickly show you where it's included and where it is. 
by the way the calculation is done so 2822 it was 20 uh, I don't remember actually if I cancel this we can go back to see when the calculation was started okay it's already too early this morning so 17, 26, 23, and finish. Okay, so about two minutes to perform this calculation, and I'm using my home laptop for this, so it's not an extremely powerful computer. If you have a, a, a strong calculation computer, uh, it's going to be even quicker. And of course, it depends on the amount of loads and amount of uh, finite elements you have in your model. So this is uh, the presentation of the results with the utilization factor. As you can see, the highest value of the utilization we have here is just slightly above one. So there is some location where it's not passing the rules. I think it's in here. It is, yeah, I, I think this orange elements are in here, we can use our peak finder tools or governing loads tools to figure out which loads are causing this problem and uh, where exactly you have a peaks. And all the others, so this bottom members are just, yeah, are fine. It's 0 0.5. Here is, is just okay, up till 0 0.9. So in general, the design is good but there is a small location where it's good to take a look uh, to. And I want to give you a sneak peek on what we are working on. In the nearest release, we are planning to have an optimization module done. So SDC Verifier will not only give you an indication if it's okay or not according to the standard, but it will also uh, rerun the analysis and suggest the different uh, shapes for uh, members to make sure that the structure is passing the rules of the standard. I wanted just to indicate to you where is, so if you are creating the custom check, you're able to add the uh, joint checks. We have joint checks according to API, ISO, and NORSOC. This is how the interface looks. Uh, everything is uh, recognized automatically. Uh, you just press find connection. There are, might be some connection where mesh is not the same or which requires your attention, then you will receive this message. And then we have a type of connection. We have a recognition of brace and hoard. We have uh, all the parameters defined. And after this, you are able to present the table with results, which will which will represent for you the calculation of API. If uh, some of you are wondering how to perform this type of joint checks, please uh, send me an email or give me a call and we will make a dedicated demonstration for this. And at this point, we are already one minute late. Late. I don't know, Petro, if there is any questions regarding the software? Yeah, uh, only one short question from Barton. It's, uh, is there a some special requirements for modeling uh, SDC to find the welds. Uh, well, all the wine, all the welds are recognized uh, on the uh, uh, difference. So, uh, on the difference of the uh, plate thickness, on the difference of the property or the material, or after a certain angle, you have a settings where you do define the angle after which the connection is going to be treated as weld. Of course, we need the merged. So a glued connection is not OK. Bohdan, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, glued connections are not OK. You need to have the merged nodes in this. So uh, yeah, in the shell elements you have. And uh, of course, the better quality of mesh you have, if it's automatic with triangles and uh, crap a mesh uh, net, it's not very good, but if you are having a precise rectangular members and if your uh, finite element is, well, I have a comparison of of the size of uh, finite elements uh, compared to the thickness of the elements to make sure that the results are completely uh, correct because to take into account these offsets, but yeah, the general uh, general answer is that you need to have uh, a 
connected nodes, so the, the nodes should be merged and the, the elements should share the same nodes for the verification. And uh, yeah, basically there is no other. The better the mesh, the better is the recognition. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention. If there is any other questions, don't hesitate to send me an email or give me a call. I have here a slide with my contact details, but I'm quite sure that most of uh, you already know how to find us. Uh, I'd be happy to help you. Thank you for uh, attending this session. I hope you got something interesting for you to think about. And if you would like to have a trial license or if you would like to, uh, to try the software yourself, don't hesitate to ask. We can provide the trial licenses for you to verify the software. And uh, I hope you all are staying safe. And uh, let's talk again soon. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Goodbye.